in Audible, you know, it must have been really interesting for you because you rehearsed it with like no sound design whatsoever, having hardly heard the orchestrations. And then when we sent you the final cut. What's it like to do it all at once? <laughs> um, it's, it's good. It's, it's rewarding. How's it rewarding, Grace? Um, I was going to say, I was going to ask you. I mean, I think that it is to be able to go on the journey from start to finish. Whew. Um, there's a full catharsis that this character gets to experience and that I get to be the vessel for. And doing it piecemeal is, piecemeal is, is hard. It's hard yeah. Because yeah. you're like, here's this, and now we'll go back over here. Yeah. We got to totally change that. And Out don't let anything. Is rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like the movie for your ears is how we, you know, and how you should we, trademark that. Yeah, movie for your ears. <laughs> um, how we talked about it um, so that it wouldn't ever sound like a book on tape, even though books on tape are wonderful in their own right. But this is a musical; it's meant to be <laughs> rhythmic and complex, and you know, music is an elevated expression. So I didn't want that to flatten in any way just because we were doing it for uh, the audio medium. So we really made a concerted effort that like we were gonna be as detailed and specific with the sound design, really taking the audience onto the boat with you, really taking them into kind of every wave, every splash, every gasp for air. And then as we were transitioning into the, you know, physical production outside, it was my earliest instinct when asked like, what kind of speakers do we need? What is the quietest sound that is going to be made? I just very instinctively felt like I don't want one pre-made sound cue in this entire show. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I think you go into every rehearsal process for a new musical and everyone's like, oh, we're not gonna do that much. And then you do a ton of stuff. So that's just, I mean, to me, that's sort of part of the fun of it is constantly reinvestigating and reimagining what's happening as you see it live. I'm also interested to know about how even what we did with Audible has changed for this. You know, there was a song that we rehearsed in Zoom that didn't make it to the Audible. Um, there are new songs. Um, there are new scenes all of the time. And, uh, 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 and just how that... Um, the immediacy of being in space together is so informative of the kind of storytelling that we're doing. I mean, I th one of the thrills of being outside, and we haven't been outside very long yet, <laughs> um, but one of the thrills of being outside is the scale of our environment feels like it matches the scale, the scale of the ocean. Of the... I said that to my wife today. Yeah. She was like, what does it feel like outside? I was like, it, she's like, there's expansive space, especially when it's light out, actually. And I think what that does to the performances, it just everything feels elevated yeah. in a way I think you would long for in an indoor theatre, but it might take more time to get there. Whereas when you're out in the elements like that, I feel like everybody um, elevates, everybody um, gets larger, more expansive, uh, more extreme in their expression, which for a piece of great extremity is very helpful. <laughs> I, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that also it gives you, you know, it's really easy to let the play is full of direct address narrative and it allows you to like really have to work to get to them because you're just farther away mm -hmm. than you would in a room where you could be like, you audience that are sitting right there, I'm gonna, you know, you have to like, work to get to them, which is sort of follows the narrative of the, of the journey itself as well. Yeah, and I feel like it's for this show in particular, when you're talking about your journey, it's really, you know, the form reflecting the content, which is like you're talking formally that an ensemble comes together and tells a story every night and you step on that stage and you don't stop. This is a kind of show that doesn't stop. So that's why the conversation has to be so rigorous in the rehearsal room is because you all step on that train and it takes you all the way through to the end, just like Tori stepping onto the boat and having to go all the way through to the end. There's something like genuinely, this word is overused, but genuinely epic about the act of telling this story. 
it's rare to encounter a story uh, in which a, a woman is in the driver's seat and she's not an author, <laughs> you know? Um, that she is complicated and she's also um, smart um, and flawed and also that that smart, complicated, flawed woman story doesn't end in like tears and tragedy, <laughs> that it ends in um, triumph and um, that it's an adventure and that that adventure is a romance. Um, and I don't mean in terms of finding love with someone. I mean, it's the, the, the adventure is the romance, mm -hmm. the journey, the struggle with oneself, with the elements, that is the, that is the romance. Um, and I was just so immediately struck by how rare it is that a woman is afforded a hero's journey as epic as this one and that her pursuit is one of excellence and higher purpose and um, her resilience and her courage and her physical uh, bravery is just so moving uh, to me and again is a narrative that I don't think is afforded to women nearly enough um, and so that kind of female Odysseus story was just like fuck yes I want to tell this uh, story and then as I got to know Tori I started to understand that her actual biography and her um, the questions that she brought onto her the boat with her um, are so, I mean, metaphysical and ex existential and universal in terms of like, how do I want to spend this precious time that I have on this earth and how can I leave it better than I found it? Yeah, I don't know why, but I just feel myself and others and the way we're looking at it, having the impulse to um, have to be um, very alive and pointed, um, yeah, and specific and sharp. Because you're competing with cows. Because we're competing cows. with cows and, and frogs. frogs. And lightning storms. And yes, but it doesn't feel like a, it doesn't feel like a desperate like, yes, don't look over there, don't look at those cows. It feels like I am more interested those cats are looking for us for half the time. <laughs> yeah.